So we're going to have an interview with a governor. And this governor did not create massive debt overhang. So I would like to present to you uh, the 50th governor of Vermont, James Douglas, and the president of the Calvin Coolidge Presidential Foundation, Matt Denhart. Please welcome them to the stage. After which we will have a break. So we're standing between them and a break, is that what? <laughs> well, Coolidge said be brief, above all things be brief. Well, this will be a semi-brief fireside chat with a former governor. Uh, we've built it in the program, it's three questions for a governor, so we will be brief and we'll try to uh, be true to that. Uh, but anyhow, if you've been paying even a, an ounce of attention uh, throughout our conference today, you're aware that Washington doesn't budget, uh, that there are prospects of it starting to budget suddenly are not great, and people like to blame politicians. I think David Malpass made a good point. Uh, we can't just count on if we just had different politicians, we'd have different outcomes. Uh, people think it's impossible to balance the budget, but governors and states seem to do that impossible on a routine basis. So we're going to hear from a governor who himself had a strong record. Uh, so I'm pleased to introduce to you uh, the, the 80th governor of Vermont and our vice chairman uh, at the Coolidge Foundation, Governor Jim Douglas. So governor, question number one. The federal government doesn't seem to care about debt or deficits, but states do. Why is that? Are state leaders just more virtuous? Uh, in a word, yes. <laughs> uh, but I think it's great uh, that we're devoting at least a couple of minutes to debt at the state and local level, uh, uh, together known as municipal debt, uh, because uh, those are also obligations that the taxpayers of America are going to have to uh, deal with as time goes on. But it's a different order of magnitude. We've talked about the $34 trillion and growing federal debt. Uh, the total municipal debt uh, outstanding is about $4 trillion. Um, I uh, never thought I'd use the word only and the word trillion in the same <laughs> sentence, but, uh, but, but it, it's, it's obviously uh, quite a lot less. And um, in addition to being more virtuous, I think there are some other uh, structural differences. Uh, for example, um, as has been noted earlier, uh, almost every state requires a balanced budget. Uh, I was going to give the audience a quiz, but Senator Welch gave the answer uh, this morning. The only state that does not require a balanced budget is the state of Vermont. But I always said we don't need it because we're so virtuous and, and fiscally responsible. Uh, and we certainly have been uh, balancing it quite well. Also, uh, Steve mentioned this in the last panel, uh, most municipal debt has a call feature. Uh, generally, we, we put a 10-year uh, call in so that if you uh, issue debt at a high rate, you can refund it um, uh, without having, uh, having to wait until its uh, maturity. And uh, we take uh, ratings more seriously. Um, you know, the federal government rating was downgraded by S&P. The outlooks were lowered by the other two rating agencies. Nobody seems to care. Uh, but at the state level, because it's competitive, we really uh, do care. And um, um, we used to be AAA in Vermont, but we're not, uh, we're not anymore. Um, now, there, there are uh, a dozen states that are not allowed by their constitutions to issue general obligation debt, but, you know, there are ways uh, uh, through revenue bonds or other uh, instruments in order to uh, incur debt when it's necessary. And of course, there are other types of uh, uh, long-term obligations like unfunded pension uh, requirements. That, but, but actually, those are only another trillion. <laughs> so it's still a lot less than the federal debt that we've been, we've been talking about. But overall, I think, um, uh, I think states have done a, a pretty good job. And um, uh, because of the competitive nature uh, among the states, as we try to attract and retain uh, businesses and jobs, uh, uh, it's kind of a check on, on state uh, debt management. Different environment with different pressures. We often, you know, sometimes, particularly when we talk about labor, we think competition is bad, but, uh, but we probably shouldn't. A competition is good, causes us to be on our best game in labor, or states trying to compete for workers, residents, and a good policy environment, of course, helps with that. Question two, Governor. 
uh, maybe more on the personal side. How, how did you do it? What are the pressures of someone who's the chief executive of a state, even a state, maybe with a norm of balancing its budget? But I'm guessing the legislators don't always just say, uh, ah, we better make sure this is balanced. What, what's it like to sit in that seat? Well, we've, been, we've done pretty well, but l let me uh, start with a trip down memory lane. Um, when I first went to the legislature a uh, <coughs> half century <coughs> ago, um, uh, our debt was rising unsustainably. I don't remember exactly what the levels were uh, uh, so long after the fact, but we realized we had to get under under control. So we adopted um, uh, something called the 90% rule, which is uh, we would not issue any more debt than 90% of the amount that was being retired in the next fiscal year. Uh, a pretty strict constraint. Uh, obviously, it, that couldn't go on forever, or we'd get down closer to zero, but it worked for a decade or so. And then we uh, instituted a system uh, that we stole from the state of Maryland. I want to give credit where it's due, uh, which um, uh, involves a capital debt affordability advisory committee uh, chaired by the state treasurer uh, that makes recommendations to the governor and legislature on how much debt ought to be authorized in each subsequent year. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, for the last three decades now, uh, the, uh, the elected officials have respected the number that that advisory committee has come up with. So we've been able to manage our, our debt in, uh, in that way. Um, as, uh, as state treasurer, I was responsible for administering the uh, pension funds, of course, and I'm pleased that during each of my eight years in that role, uh, we increased the funded status of our three different pension systems. They've slid a little bit uh, since then. We got four upgrades in our bond ratings when I was the debt manager, and and um, that's slipped too uh, since then. But 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 uh, in terms of budget balancing, um, uh, we we've always done quite well. Um, uh, Senator Welch was the leader of our state senate during half of my tenure, and he was a good partner. Um, um, we had different priorities. Uh, he and his colleagues might want to balance it on the revenue side, and I might have a different point of view. But in the end, we always had a balanced budget, and I, I think that uh, that's something of which we can be uh, very, very proud. I, I, I suppose uh, uh, I might uh, mention another governor uh, um, of Massachusetts um, uh, a century-ish ago. Um, uh, we, we all know about uh, President Coolidge's restraint and how he and President Harding uh, worked to get the debt loads down, the tax rates down, but uh, he, uh, he really came uh, to that realization based on earlier experience. And, and it might even be uh, as a child growing up in the hamlet of Plymouth Notch, Vermont, when he would go to town meeting with his dad and see the, uh, the, the hardworking people of the community, the impact on their um, uh, family budgets when taxes went up. And then when he got to Massachusetts uh, in politics, um, during the time of his lieutenant governorship, the state constitution was amended uh, to put in place a budget process very similar to what Harding and he did at the federal level uh, later on. And as part of that, the lieutenant governor chaired a group called the, uh, the Executive Council. Some New England states have this, uh, uh, or this entity that approves gubernatorial decisions. And, he, and, and so he was seeing all these requests coming in for more employees and state agencies, more programs, more money. And so he realized the tendency of government to grow unless restrained. So when he got to the governorship, uh, he took it very seriously. Uh, he took about 120 different state programs and collapsed them into about 20, uh, laid off a, a lot of employees uh, to the point where he and others wondered if he was going to face some trouble in his reelection, but he didn't. And it's a credit to the people of the Commonwealth who understood that they needed that kind of restraint. And so based on that experience, um, when he got to Washington, President Coolidge was the tough um, um, budget hawk and fiscal manager that we know today. And what kind of leadership does that take, even as governor? To uh, uh, to me, it, it, it strikes me that that really has to be a priority of the chief executive to, to ensure that, because the legislator has so many incentives to spend money. Of course, the governor does in some ways, too. But the governor is elected by all the people of the state, just like the president, all the people of the country, and hopefully has the uh, sort of the institutional seat to look out for more than just uh, interest groups. Well, we, we uh, heard earlier about... Uh, uh, politicians, especially from Washington, I suppose it's true at the state level as well, where they go with those big fake styrofoam checks and hand them out to some organization, and <clears throat> which in turn names something after that politician, and it's a vicious cycle that is pretty hard to arrest. 
Um, but in my first budget speech to the legislature of 20 years ago or so, uh, I, uh, uh, I quoted President Kennedy, uh, who said, to govern is to choose. And I said, we might ha not have the same priorities, but we've got to make some choices. We just can't do everything. And that uh, mentality that I described about the focus on a balanced budget uh, certainly continued to, uh, to guide us. But, you know, at some point, people have to make some decisions that are not that popular. Uh, coming out of the Great Recession, uh, uh, like Coolidge in, in Massachusetts, I had to uh, lay off state employees. And I, I still remember encountering one of them uh, after the fact at uh, some event, and I you know, was girding myself for a very <laughs> difficult discussion. And she said, I understand. Uh, I got to lead on a job in the private sector. I, I get it. And I thought, uh, so I, I hope and believe most people do understand that government can't do everything, government shouldn't do everything, and that uh, leaders will have some, uh, some support to, to make those tough calls. Question three, Governor. Our final question. Economic growth has been mentioned several times and the importance of growth to, of course, grow the economy, make life better, uh, but also has tremendous impacts on the budget when you have a larger economy. As a governor, uh, how does that factor into your thinking? You mentioned some about the economic competition between states. Uh, how, do you, how do you try to foster pro-growth policy as a governor? Well, to, to make it easier and uh, less expensive and less onerous for a business to succeed. Um, um, as I'm sure many in our audience know, the, the, the hot button may be different for a different uh, company or organization. Uh, it certainly could be the tax rate. But it might be something else. It might be utility costs for a manufacturer that uh, that uh, has to be competitive. It might be insurance costs that are uh, that not competitive. It could be the regulatory burden, the process of permitting that's onerous for for some, depending upon the individual organization. It might be the workforce and its um, um, size and skill. So uh, trying to figure out what the what the issue is for an individual company and 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 doing our best to address it. Uh, it can be cutthroat out there. During uh, some of the um, uh, times during the uh, the Great uh, Recession, uh, I got um, word from some uh, employers in southern Vermont who would say, you know who just called me? The New Hampshire Economic Development Director trying to get us to move across the river. And so, you know, it, it, it's a serious business, and, and so governors and, and others in state government have to take that uh, seriously. Um, so uh, getting a, a strong economy is critical. Uh, it's uh, uh, going to enhance a rating, a part of the rating agency uh, analysis. It's not just the, the numbers, the ratios, but it's also the vitality of the economy of a state or, or a city. Uh, so it's really better all around to have an economic uh, um, uh, vitality that, uh, that will uh, be positive budgetarily, fiscally, uh, as well as economically for the people of the jurisdiction. Well, well, thank you. I said three questions, but we still have a minute or even two. So I'm going to do a bonus fourth question. And Governor, if you might summarize, what, what are some of the lessons or maybe some of the sort of institutional arrangements, the things that create better incentives for the states that lead to better outcomes that perhaps uh, could be adopted or implemented in some way on the federal level? Well, we, I think some of our other panelists have, have hit on some possible ideas. I don't know what's, uh, uh, what uh, is actually the art of the possible, but um, uh, requiring balanced budgets obviously is a good idea. The, uh, uh, the um, uh, line item veto that 40 or more governors have, I don't, I didn't, um, uh, uh, certainly uh, has, has shown to uh, constrain um, uh, spending. Um, and. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I like to think that uh, people will recognize the uh, courage that's necessary among public officials. But uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Malpas uh, uh, counseled us at uh, lunch, maybe that's naive. And, and then, in fact, we have to put in some constraints, some uh, some uh, procedural changes that will uh, will work. Um, and maybe it is as simple as uh, uh, not letting them travel. <laughs> <laughs> during recesses or, 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 or not paying them until the uh, budget is uh, passed on an annual yeah, year. Like yeah, well, I don't know. Um, but, but some kind of um, a meaningful uh, um, constraint so that they actually have to do their jobs, make decisions, and, uh, and respect the, uh, the people who are paying the tab. Might just add one, one point of my own, which is something I think Coolidge would have said. Uh, it's easy to blame the politicians they often reflect us. So I think uh, in terms of developing norms that we all think are important, 
and uh, governing ourselves and, and uh, knowing when to say no, even to ourselves, perhaps is important. Governor, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.